Now, the much anticipated John New Special Assignment documentary, Who Killed the Judges, will be premiering in just about 80 minutes. Raymond Aqua, the producer of the documentary, has joined me in the studio for this very, very important documentary. Now, Raymond, thank you for, for coming over. Now, this documentary, or rather, what actually happened is, has been a dark chapter in this country's history. Mm -hmm. This evening, what are we trying to do with it? This evening, we are trying to let the people understand what happened from an objective, comprehensive point of view. Indeed, there has been different accounts from 1982 when this incident happened. We've had the SIB's, uh, what they call it, first review, and the police investigative team worked on it. They gave the document to the SI SIB. The SIB prepared a docket, handed over to the public tribunal. Part of it got to the tribunal. The tribunal sought to prosecute people. Others were not put before the court. Others were not prosecuted at all. Then later on, we had the National Reconciliation Commission seeking to go back to these matters. But as we have been told, it was neither with the competence of a judicial body, so could not prosecute anybody, and, and also did not have what it takes to actually do, as critics have said, a thorough review on this matter. What you find in this documentary is the holistic review from right from 82 till now. What has happened over the period? The people who were, one, involved, those who were purported to have been involved, those who were actually involved in the way of getting to the perpetrators and also arresting the suspects, and those who were in court, those who sat on the cases and decided that this one should go to jail, this one should not go to jail, are all in this documentary seeking to give us some retrospective views on how best this nation can move forward uh, with this particular matter. Now, some names, some huge names, some mm -hmm. very, very prominent names are going to be mentioned in this documentary. Very much so. And uh, what do we expect to be the ramifications? Uh, uh, not very much. I mean, not anything more than what is kind of the case. I mean, this is to make sure that people are educated. This is to make sure that we have proper appreciation of our history. The names that are going to be mentioned in there will not be with malice. It is not as if we are just interested in naming or shaming people. We are interested in putting the facts right. And there isn't a single person mentioned on this report who is not legitimately involved or hasn't been over the period mentioned as being involved. Indeed, there isn't a single individual who is in this report today who do not have close links, who there is no evidence suggests that did something wrong or is involved in this particular act right from 82 up to today. What it does right one thing you tell anybody who's watching the news right now that they should stay tuned and watch this documentary in the next week shows in the next 80 minutes. So to be clear, some have also talked about why this over the period has been dealt with and there's no need going back. If you spend quality time watching this, you have the most comprehensive appreciation of what happened. And I dare say, this is the biggest crime to have happened in this country, mindful of the fact that almost three different attempts to remove the PNDC junta was related to this particular crime. Up till now, there's still a lot of controversy surrounding it. If you want to fully appreciate what all of this is really about, you cannot go beyond this documentary. It's important to also uh, talk about some of the processes we've gone through to get to this point. <laughs> there are some things that, of course, we haven't shared with lots of the people <laughs> who will be watching the documentary, which, as I indicated, will be showing in the next 18 minutes. But just give us uh, some highlights. So it's been almost two years, let's be clear. And, and you, you, virtually everybody in this enterprise had to one way or the other come in to aid your very good self, happen to help out in getting to the bottom of the matter in very varied ways. Also, because, because of how controversial the issue is, one, the willingness of people to give information freely, two, the research required going back to 82 to get the right information, the unadulterated information, the missing reports that ought to be uncovered from where they happen to be, and also the individuals involved. Some of them are dead, others are very difficult to find. Some of them are purported to have died in the process. So we'll tell you about a gentleman who was supposed to have been shot dead and yet is still alive. Oh, really? Yes, in this particular documentary, in all of its forms. <laughs> it, it, it's an interesting one, and uh, if you get to fully appreciate it, you will understand that it's a lot of work that has gone in. It's an entire institutional team's work that's gone into putting this together. 
All right, thank you very much, uh, Raymond Aqua, who is the producer of the documentary Who Killed the Judges. Now, former chairman of the National Media Commission, Cabral Ble Amehe, has described Joy News's latest special assignment documentary, Who Killed the Judges, as a great effort aimed at bringing closure to a national tragedy. The documentary series focuses on crimes that shook the nation. And Mr. Blair Mayhew, who was director of the Ghana Institute of Journalism and a columnist at the time of the incident, says many Ghanaians remain dissatisfied with the outcome of police investigations despite the convictions the state secured. His colleague Ben F. Singh has also commended what he says will attempt to reconstruct history. First, listen to the former NMC chairman, Kara Blair Mayhew. Well, what this do documentary would do, in my view, will be to initiate more dialogue conversation on that chapter of our history uh, with a view that um, it may never happen again. Uh, those who, uh, who could be held responsible, ultimately response, responsible for, for, for the gruesome murder, I'm sure will not have uh, uh, easy nights with this documentary coming up because it means that this is an unresolved matter. Uh, it can keep coming and coming again. You know, in the U.S., people are still talking about uh, find out what exactly, who was exactly behind the assassination of Kennedy. And it's not new in history for people to look for, for closure. For as long as there are doubts, there are ifs, and unresolved issues about 30th June, Anytime the bar association and the nation mourns the, the death of the three and the officer, we are those people who were responsible, dead or alive, who have uh, uneasy nights. There are some who ask whether it is fair to their victims, those who whose um, relatives they lost their relatives in this whole incident. Well, those were it, it, to to the extent that they were personal tragedies. Um, we don't want to revisit and remind them about their, their sorrow, about their, their tragedy. But their tragedy was a national tragedy. And for as long as we don't have the ultimate answers, uh, the nation has a right to keep digging and digging. Because when we find the, the real brains behind the murder, it will bring some serenity and some foreclosure uh, to, 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 to those families. We can now listen to the managing editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, Ben Epson. Mm. You know, a day after the bodies were found, uh, then chairman of the PNDC said that that act had been uh, allegedly been committed by opponents of the government to put the government in bad light. Uh, personally, until there are other indications, those suspected to have been involved were executed. But there is, I believe there was more to it. The whole, I mean, that is my personal feeling. When you say there's more to it, what do you mean? You see. Uh, one works that when you hear a documentary has been put together on a subject matter, uh, what are your initial reactions to that thing that a documentary has been put together on it? Well, I'll watch it, and I'll take a decision. But do you expect to find answers to some of these more to it that you could have? It may confirm some of the doubts that some of us have. But until I see it, I cannot, until I see it, I cannot say that it's a bad documentary or not. What would you expect to find in it? Well, rehashing of events. Um, I'm sure if we talk to George Ajakum, the author of a book, Who Called the Judges? For tribunal chairman, he's spoken to Mr. Quanson, he's spoken to some of the investigators, and so on. And uh, well, I don't know what is in there, I'll watch, then I'll take a decision. But it's a, it's a bold attempt because it's talking about over 30 years now. 
since the incident happened, yeah. Well, son of one of the murder judges, Kwab J. J. Pong, has been recounting memories from the day. I just went and slept. Okay. I slept. So it was only in the morning that we had a, a loud knock on the door. And it was coming from our next door neighbors. And that happened to be Justice Pukusako there. So the wife came to come and inform my dad that last night the husband had been picked and that she saw them. I think she argued a bit, but they were able to take care of the husband away. But apparently it was after that that they came to a house. We're not the ne next, door ne next door neighbors. So I, I didn't even get it. I just got rushed up to my father's bedroom to go and tell him what has happened. It's, I got to the bedroom, he wasn't there. I was, so I went to my mother's room, I said, what is daddy? Uh, so he should be asleep, so he's not there. Then I went downstairs and the food remained in the same way he left it. Yeah, you know, yes. not finished eating, nobody had touched it. You know, so we were confused. Then I also ran out of the house and went to Justice Edusa's house, which is just across. The judges used to stay around the ridge area. So it so was when I got to Justice Edusa's house that she, he confirmed that this what he, he called Justice Apalu, who was then the Chief Justice at the time. So it was then that we realized that there was something serious happening and that some three judges had been picked the previous night. And do stay tuned. We will be bringing you reactions from some key personalities who are connected to this uh, particular incident that happened over 30 years ago. We're bringing you comprehensive coverage uh, post the screening of who killed the judges. Now, young poet Sabukio Sabote has been wrapping it all up in, uh, artistically in the following piece. If their souls could speak, they would tell of a good story. A story that will keep mouths quivering. A story that will be the unending truth on the tongues of future generation. A story that will bring their children peace. A story that will be history, but this untold story is left behind. Justice Kojo Eje Ejepon. Justice Frederick Poku Sarkodie. Justice Cecilia Afran Kranting Ado. Who killed the judges?